It's not rocket Hold it down. It's science, guys. That's what we're going to talk about here on the Lawn Warrior channel today. We're going to talk about, do you really need to follow the science when it comes to lawn care? My own personal experience and what you could probably do at home as well if you really don't want to follow the science as well. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. Really does help out with the channel, but we're gonna hop right into today's video and we're gonna talk about the science of lawn care. And is there really a science? What is science? It's too long care. And in my own personal opinion, there really isn't a science to lawn care. Uh, you know, you'll see a ton of those soil test videos coming out probably in the, sometime in the early spring. You know, people telling you to get a soil test. Soil test. The soil test. Is soil test. The soil test. Soil test. Soil test. And soil test. Soil test. The soil test. Soil test. Soil test. So you can get a good reading for your lawn and what you should throw down and you shouldn't throw down. And at the end of the day, you don't really. I. I mean, you could get a soil test. By all means, you can get a soil test. But in my own personal opinion, from what I've seen from doing a soil test, is not a whole lot changed for me. I did a soil test in the early spring of last year and I did a soil test at the end of this year in October and really didn't see much of a difference between the, soil, the two soil tests. Again, this year I did a high nitrogen, mostly nitrogen fertilizer application program, very little phosphorus, very little potassium. So honestly, if you really wanted to go the route of just throwing down a high nitrogen fertilizer. Never forget, nitrogen drives the bus. If you want a green lawn, you'll have nitrogen in every single application you make all year long. And you would probably be fine throughout the year. Um, that's what I saw this year. Didn't, did my levels vary that much? Again, no. And again, if you uh, by all means, if you want to get a soil test, go get a soil test. There are a ton of soil tests out there. I get mine from Spectrum Analytics. There's my soil. There's RX soil. There's there's a bunch of different soil tests out there. Uh, whatever fits your budget, I would recommend you go get one if that's what you want to do. So there really isn't a science, in my opinion, to this whole lawn care thing. Uh, from again, what I've seen over my years, my dad had a lawn business when I was younger. He was cutting upwards of 60 plus lawns a week. On a weekly basis, it was his part-time job. He worked two jobs to support our family over the years. Uh, he worked those for almost 30 years, both those jobs. And from what I've seen from cutting lawns with him from I was 13 up to through college, I, some a lot of these lawns, we didn't do any fertilization. We only did cutting. We did cutting, we whacking, edging, and blowing, and that's it. We did leaf jobs in the fall time we did some you know landscaping some mulching plant you know uh, shrubs some stuff like that but that's it no fertilization of any of these lawns over the course of the 20 some years if the customer wanted to have their lawn fertilized it was up for up to them to go get like a true green in our area we have a it was a, a green thumb is one of the the actual uh, people that do fertilizing uh, scott's is out here there's a whole spring green is one there's a whole bunch of different you know, fertilizer companies out there that will come out, spray your lawn, keep it nice and fertilized throughout the year. Um, and we did have, you know, customers that did that. But honestly, a lot of these lawns were mostly just taken care of by Mother Nature. We're gonna see none other than Mother Nature. Gosh. Just the rain and a weekly mowing. Now, not every lawn was cut weekly. There were some lawns that were cut bi-weekly, bi every two weeks. But for a majority of the people that got cut weekly, their lawns look great. Uh, they were always mulched or side discharged. They were never bagged. We That was one thing we did not do. We only bagged certain lawns that, like say, if they had a pool and we couldn't side discharge or mulch the lawn and keep it neat, we would bag those areas, but we would have to take the bags with us. In our community, a lot of the people that do bag have the big green recycle bins. So our garbage people that come weekly can take those uh, big green garbage bins and they can recycle the clippings. We can't leave bags of clippings down at the street. So that was one of the reasons why we try not to bag as well. So because we couldn't leave the bags at the customer's houses and we didn't have a place that we could, you know, just collect the, the clippings in the back of a truck and, and disperse them somewhere. So again, People, that's one thing we used to always tell customers was we do not bag lawns. We always try the mulch or side discharge, which actually acts as a natural fertilizer for the lawn. 
when you're you know clipping and you're mulching you're putting those clippings you're putting those nutrients that are in those leaf blades back into your grass into your soil which is great so again a lot of these lawns they weren't fertilized they were naturally fertilized if you want to call it that by us just mulching and bag and not bagging these lawns and they look great so again when it when people tell you oh you got to follow the science you got to get a soil test at the end of the day you if you really don't want to go through the whole trouble of doing that and looking at numbers that you're not going to probably understand or reaching out to someone that's going to tell you what to do you don't have to you could actually probably get away with just following maybe a four-step program from your local ace from your local you know home depot or lowe's or just sticking to a high nitrogen you know program of just a high first number on the bag and that's probably what i'm going to go towards next year again i did that this year i stuck to a high nitrogen fertilizer program and i saw good results i did have some uh, problem areas in my lawn uh, i did have some fungus and i probably did some overwatering as well and i would put that on myself because i was a little bit of a perfectionist this year i tried to follow a program that was set out for myself other than the, the disease and the fungus part and for the most part the program worked to what i was expecting it to do um, at the project lawn my sister's house where they don't water nearly as much as i do and i was not focused on their lawn as much i was not out there every month fertilizing their lawn looked great they actually were in a really great spot going into the fall time there was a couple areas that were a little patchy but as a whole their lawn looked great and I'd say, again we did not do nearly as much fertilizer at their house that i did at my house and i might live by that this year and just live by mother nature a little bit and just not follow the direct signs of the whole lawn care program or the whole lawn care shtick if that's what you want to call it i'm trying not to get personal in this video but from my experience right now i only have one income coming to my house we don't always have not everybody has a million dollar budget where they can go out and get the greatest you know piece of equipment or fertilizer or whatever herbicide whatever it may be or whatever you know we don't not everyone has that in their budget you know right now I'm the only one that's working right now. My wife, she's staying home right now to raise our kids to a certain point where then we can both work again. So I'm trying to cut back on certain things in my house and my yard is probably going to be one of them. You know, when, when, you know, some people suggest to you, you know, sod for certain areas of your yard, when you have seed on hand, I'm going to try the seed first. I want to save some money. I have seed on hand. I'm not going to go out there and spend $500 on sod on my yard when I could put that $500 maybe into, you know, clothes or food or whatever, you know, to pay the bills, the important things. And at the end of the day, when it comes back to it, guys, it's just grass, honestly. But if you are a perfectionist, you may, you know, and you have the budget, you know, maybe you'll go above and beyond. But as I've seen from my personal experience, you don't always have to go above and beyond and go to the T when it comes to things. So that's pretty much today's video, guys. I just wanted to show you that, you know, it's not always about the signs or to the T of everything, you know, from my own personal experience of cutting many lawns over the years and seeing many lawns over the years. And honestly, when we got a new customer, sometimes and a lot of times it was just having a nice clean cut lawn on the street, having say three or four lawns right next to each other and having a nice crisp edge and a nice good well you know really sharp looking cut to a lawn said a lot to somebody and it wasn't always the greenest lawn on the block or the do or dominated every neighbor on the block but it was just that aesthetic look just a nice clean cut lawn with a nice clean edge said everything to someone driving by and that's how we got a lot of customers over the years just word of mouth people actually seeing a nice clean job and again those lawns weren't always the nicest lawns on the block so just a quick plug here at the end of my video, I don't want to get involved in any of the lawn care drama that's going on between these two channels, but I just wanted to do a quick plug to what one of the channels is doing. They're trying to raise money for St. Jude's. Again, St. Jude's, obviously it's a great hospital, helps many families out that can't afford childhood cancer, uh, you know, treatments and things like that. The info or the website is wecarelawncare.info. I'm going to leave it linked down below. If you want to go and donate, by all means, please click on the link. I did donate myself. I only donated $50. 
that's all I could afford right now. I, I wish I could donate more, but I only did $50. But again, the website's going to be linked below. It's wecarelongcare.info. Go check it out, guys. If you want to donate to St. Jude's, please click the link below, and thank you. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, make sure you smash that like button. It really does help out with the channel. If you're interested in any of my other content, I'm available on Instagram. I'm available on TikTok. Go check me out there. And like always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>